Hey everyone, and welcome to another video. Now, most of you have probably heard of Timu at this point, and if you haven't already been bombarded by the massive amount of adverts on YouTube that I have, then Timu is an online retailer offering massive, massive discounts on anything ranging from homeware to clothes to even computer components. So when I saw this CPU heatsink and fan for only £6.98, I just thought, no, I, I have to buy this and make a video on it. Even if I don't make a video, I just have to buy it and see just how terrible or how surprisingly good it might actually be. So that's exactly what I did. Now, you can see here that it is a 120mm fan. Now, it does claim 3-pin PWM, which technically isn't really possible because PWM connectors need a 4th pin to control the speed. But moving past that, it uh, should be for LG 1700, 1200, 11.5x sockets, AM3 and even AM4, which is hopefully what I'm going to be testing this on today. So here it is then, it's the Tishrix CPU cooler. Now it's very, very minimalist box. It's literally just a plain box with a sticker on it. And all that says is TSR. 127 11 5x 1700 AM3 AM4 just sockets that this should actually be compatible with. Now, I have opened this already. I should point out actually, full disclosure, I literally, literally just saw this and thought that's bound to be complete and utter crap. I have to buy this. So yeah, I bought it of my own accord and with my own money. But yeah. I have already opened this and had a look at it, so it's not going to be first impressions, but I did put it all back in the box as you would actually get it yourself. If I can get that off. So here's the cooler itself. It doesn't actually look half bad, considering I only paid seven British pounds for it. The heatsink. The fin density isn't exactly great. It's like you can run your fingers over it and it definitely feels like like you definitely know that it's, it's been made as cheap as humanly possible. Um, it is indeed 3 pins, so not PWM like the ad on their website actually says. So you can see the mounting mechanism there for AM3 and AM4 CPUs. So as long as you're using the standard mounting hardware for AMD on your motherboard, then it should work fine. You do also get the Intel um, brackets for the cooler in the box as well. Now, if I can show you this properly, these little tabs here, Okay, it's going to focus. No, yeah, those little tabs there, um, they're all around. They're what those clips actually hold on to. I'm not, probably not going to be doing it on Intel today, just aim for if I can actually get it working. But yeah, it does look like it's going to be a bit tricky mounting this on Intel hardware anyway. But yeah, overall, first impressions. It's clearly been made as cheap as humanly possible, but considering I only paid £7 for it, I'm actually quite impressed. Whether or not the cooling is actually going to be any good, that remains to be seen. But let's get this in a system. First, actually, let's do some comparisons compared to the Thermal Rate Peerless Assassin I currently have in my personal system. So for comparison, I've tuned the Ryzen 7 5800 in my personal system to a fixed core clock across all of its 8 cores of 4.5 GHz at a fixed core voltage of 1.2 volts. This is going to drop a little bit once we get the benchmark running though. And it has dropped to about 1.18 volts here. Still perfectly stable though. We are now getting a power draw of around 112 to 113 watts. Temperatures here are pretty good so far. 
we're getting around 58 to 60-ish degrees Celsius here. You can see the maximum temperature we're getting here is about 60 degrees Celsius here on some of the cores. And we finish with a score here of 15356. And the temperature here didn't go at all over 62 degrees Celsius across all of its eight cores, which is pretty good considering the sort of spread you normally see from core to core. Power draw stuck to around 113 watts as well. So I'll get the Tishrex CPU cooler fitted and then I'll run the same tests again under the same conditions. So I've fitted the Tishrex CPU cooler to the system now and I'll throw up a couple of screenshots just now of the idle temperatures. And you can already see just how much of a difference there is between the Tishrex cooler and the thermal rate cooler. Thermal rate on the left and Tishrex on the right. There's around a 8 to 9 degrees Celsius difference just in idle temperatures. So add some power draw to that and things are going to get pretty bad. So let's run Cinebench R23 just now. Straight away temperatures are already 80 degrees Celsius and still climbing really really fast. Power draw is higher now because <laughs> Um, some of the cores there hit 89, 90 degrees Celsius there. And the benchmark's crashed, by the way, in case you didn't see that. The temperatures are so much higher now that the benchmark is actually unstable at the exact same settings. Whereas before it was getting to around 62, 63-ish degrees Celsius, if I remember right. And we are already 25 plus degrees Celsius above that, within a matter of seconds. So it's definitely not... A suitable cooler for this kind of power draw. What I'm going to do now actually is do another test where I put the Ryzen 7 5800 into its 45 watt eco mode and see if the Tishrit cooler can even handle that. It should have a much better time but I am still expecting to see much higher temperatures. So we're back after setting the Ryzen 5800's 45 watt eco mode and you can already see core clocks are significantly lower than what we set with the manual OC. Down to around 3.575 to around 3.6-ish gigahertz across all of its eight cores. Power draw is down to around 60-ish watts now. And even though we're seeing about 50 watts less than what we did previously, core temperatures are upwards of 70 degrees Celsius already. And it's only just a single run of the test so far. Scores are going to be significantly reduced from before. 12,216 points here, compared to the around 15.3k we managed before with the thermal rate cooler. Run the test again to get temps up a bit more like I did previously. 71 to 73 degrees Celsius here. Which is fine, that's a totally acceptable temperature, but that's along with around a gigahertz less frequency and also significantly more power draw. So yeah, um, that was pretty disastrous overall for the Tishrek CPU cooler. The roughly 110 watt heat load that the Ryzen 5800 put out at 4.5 gigahertz and 1.2 volts it completely and utterly overwhelmed our little Timu cooler here. Jumping down to a roughly 65 watt heat load though had temperatures in the sort of 70 to mid 70s range across all the cores which is a hell of a lot better although that does come at the cost of vastly reduced CPU frequencies though. Saying that though 65 watts we're looking at roughly i5-9600K up to at a push the i5-10400, the 6 core 12 thread CPU. So even for CPUs like that, if you want something that's at least going to cool it and look a bit flashier than the standard Intel cooler, then I'll actually try to get some shots in just now of what this looks like in a system if I've managed to if I've managed to tone down just how insanely bright these LEDs actually are. But yeah, if you want something at least cools a 65 watt CPU well enough, while also looking a bit flashier than, say, the standard Intel cooler, 
for example. Six, seven pounds could be worth it. But um I personally wouldn't buy it, but it might be worth it to you. So yeah, it was pretty fun just buying this to have a look at it and making a video for you guys out of it. So yeah, that'll be it for today. Um I'll put various links and that, like Patreon and ko down in the description below if you'd like to support me in creating these videos. I'd also really appreciate the like and subscribe to the channel um, if you enjoyed the video of today and would like to see more content like this. So hopefully you enjoyed my little look at this cooler um, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Bye.